Hi guys, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about the biggest non-technical mistakes that photographers commit and how to solve them. So what I did for research for this video was that I posted this question to a bunch of photography groups around Facebook. I asked them, what was your worst photography mistake? So basically it's a photographer's confession about the mistakes that they, that they encountered during their photography career. And I specified to make sure that it shouldn't be technical, meaning it's not about overexposure, wrong composition, none of those things. These are the mistakes in his journey that if he were to impart some knowledge to a photographer that's just starting off, this is the advice that he would give or he or she would give. But for the purpose of this video, there were actually, it was so much fun because a lot of people actually commented on the post. What I looked for was a commonality within all those answers in order for me to come up with, I think about 10 to 12, very, very common mistakes that photographers commit. The first one obviously is gas. Everybody just regrets buying too much gear, buying gear that they don't really need. I myself suffered from that. That's why I created a video. I'll post a link below. It is about my worst photography purchases. But with gas, I until now, I honestly haven't found the solution for that because I still feel that there are times that I would justify a need to a want or no, sorry, a want to a need. And that is the most common mistake that photographers actually commit. Though I think right now I've sort of learned my lesson. I think the, the only way you could really get over gas is through experience and knowing what you really need in your journey in terms of a photographer. So once you've found whatever niche that you want to be in, then you could tailor fit everything that you're buying specifically for that. It is, this is actually quite funny. It happens to everyone and it is that common everybody leaves something behind from SD cards, batteries, lenses to one photographer even leaving his entire bag. So um, I, I, that happened to me just recently actually. I thought it would never happen because I always have a checklist of what I need to bring. And it happened at the worst possible time because it was a, it was a long planned vacation that I had made with my wife. So we were really looking forward to this vacation. I had my entire photography bag with me, like my light, my all the lenses that I would be needing, thinking already ahead of how I would be shooting because it's an island in the Philippines called Chargao and I've been there a few times, but it was her first time. So I was so excited knowing where I would be shooting her. Then the moment I arrived in our hotel, I opened up my bag. I saw that I forgot my my case for all my SD card. You should have seen my wife's face when, when I told her that I forgot the SD cards. Um, and we were in an island, so we couldn't really buy um, SD cards. And the nearest store was about two or three hours away by boat. So unfortunately, uh, fortunately, I had some friends who set up shop there in the island as photographers. So I did a shout out and asked if they had some extra SD cards. and. Fortunately, they were able to, to lend me a few to get me through the entire, the entire shoot without any problem. So it does happen to a lot of people. So from now on, after that incident, what I would do is every single bag, I would have at least a spare 16 gig card or one of my older cards. Because I have a tendency to, the moment one card um, feels as if it's about to fail, I put it already in a different container so that I don't use that for weddings where everything's very, uh, very intense whenever you're shooting. So, but those cards relatively are still about 90% or 95% safe. So I would put each card, one, one card per bag. So I have a few of those left over. So I left actually one in each car and every bag that I have now, I have at least one spare SD card there. So yeah, it happens to everyone and it is that common. So you don't feel bad if it does happen to you. This one resonates to me also when I saw all the comments about this. Um, it is not really putting value in oneself. And I remember starting out as a hobbyist, I actually shot so many people for free just for the sake of honing my craft. And it was very difficult for me to transition from a hobbyist to that of a, 
of a professional photographer that charges for, for specific shoots. Now, I understand as a hobbyist that you can't really charge anything for the work that you're doing because you are still practicing, but believe in yourself that whatever it is that you're doing is worth something. So that eventually, whenever you do get into it professionally, um, you know how to charge and make sure that you don't undercharge. Because uh, in the industry, the problem there is that a lot of people actually take advantage of up and coming photographers and ask for their services for free. And you think that it might be a good opportunity for you to be able to infiltrate that type of industry, but it just shows, it just gives them the impression that you are cheap. Therefore, if you want to increase your prices in the future, it will become more difficult for you to be able to do that because of how you started. Instead of just saying, okay, this is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a value to my time. So make sure that you put a value to your work, whether it be um, an exchange deal for food or cash, just put a value to your money, uh, to just put a value to your work. So another one, I am phrasing it as listening blindly. A lot of photographers are complaining about advice, especially like, for example, I am giving you advice. So I'm telling you guys, don't take advice, don't take my advice as a gold, but take it with a grain of salt and see if it applies to you. Because if you listen blindly, the problem is some people have different experiences as you and each person or each photographer will be different. We can share with you the knowledge and the expertise or the, or the hardships that we went through. But when you listen to it, listen and take it with a grain of salt and make sure that you analyze it for you. And another thing which actually relates to the first topic, which was gas, is that Normally, as a hobbyist, you would approach one of your professional photographers or those people that have been doing it for a long time and ask, hey, what's the best gear to buy? What should I do? What should I, what should I bring? And all those things. And sometimes they're correct, sometimes they are wrong. So don't listen to them blindly, meaning ask for, her, ask for their advice as a confirmation of what you already feel you want to do. Like, um, I want to buy a specific lens. And then you ask for their opinion about that lens, that's fine. But then if you go to them and say, hey, I want to buy a lens, but I don't know what to buy. And then they just give you advice and you get it. Then, then you find out that it's really not for you. So that's a problem there. So best is always to, uh, have your own mind, but listen to what they're saying, but don't take it as if they were gold, especially from us. Like for example, here I am talking to you guys in YouTube you don't necessarily have to agree with everything that I say, but I am putting it out there in order for you guys to see if it applies to you. And if it does, then thank you very much for your time. And if it does, leave a comment below and tell me what you think about, about the video. So, you know, that's how it is. That's really how it is. You can't please everyone. Next, settling for the now. This is basically all those photographers that confessed to making the mistake of buying what they could afford and not what they really wanted. The reason why it is a mistake is because if this is what you really want and you buy something that you don't really want but you're just settling, you end up losing money in that particular item that you bought because eventually you will buy what you really want. So my suggestion would be if you can't afford it now, then just save up for it and not really um, waste your money on something that will just scratch the itch momentarily. Now, you're, this is a very sensitive topic because it has something to do with finances. So this is the way I approach it when it comes to business. If that particular item is really a need and it will benefit my photography, meaning it will make my photography even better. So if I believe that buying this particular lens will greatly improve the output of my photography or my staff's photography, then it might be a worthwhile investment. What if I can't afford it now? Then I would actually push the numbers and see how much income will this particular item generate? Will we be able to um, make it up in, let's say, a year? Will, it, will we be able to get extra clients within that year? Will it uh, improve our, our photography drastically that will allow us to get more clients? then I could actually put it on layaway, put it on the card, pay for it installment, and let it pay for itself, rather than saving up until we get it when I can actually consider all those time, the time that it took to save up as missed opportunity. So 
it really depends on what you're going to be using it, using it for. As a hobby, it becomes very different. But for a business owner, that is how I approach things. That's why I believe that it's not about just buying it for the sake of buying it now because we need it. But rather, I will get something that we actually want and need for the long term because it is, in the end, a long term investment. Next. It's not protecting yourself legally, especially with us, the professional photographers, because make sure that your contract states everything. You protect yourself from, um, from clients that might go crazy. You protect, even if you're friends, even if you're friends, you just have to make sure that you put everything in black and white, whatever it is that you're gonna deliver, so just so that you can manage expectations. In my, let's, say, let's say, for example, in my contract, there is already a general clause that I can use the images for my promotion and the promotion of the products that I am endorsing. So um, in any case that they see, let's say for example, one of their pictures, one of their wedding pictures comes out, uh, not that they do complain, but then if there, there is an instance that they do complain, it is stated in my contract that I can use those images, but sometimes I take it a bit further and actually make them sign another model release just for that specific image. So it's always best to protect yourself, especially like, for example, now we're amidst a pandemic. Um, you've got non-refundable down payments. You've got uh, clauses for, for certain situations like this. So these are the things that you can't help, but it should always be in black and white. So the next one's a bit controversial. It's thinking that there's a difference between a natural light photographer and a strobist or a flash photographer. Um, I got this because of comments from, from one side saying that they, they regret not learning how to use flash when they needed it. And the other aspect saying that they regret not really practicing too much with natural light and just depending on their artificial light all the time. And why is this important? Because there's always going to be a clash that I'm a natural light photographer, I'm a, I'm a flash photographer. For me, there's really no such thing. You are a photographer. Basically, we all play with light. So some people just love playing with natural light. Some people love playing with artificial light. But you should always know how to use both. If the natural light is beautiful, then of course use natural light. But if you believe that natural light is subpar, then use your, your artificial light that you brought along. Just so that you, can, you don't have that excuse. Like part, of, part of the reason on why this topic came about was some people saying um, they made a mistake of not bringing a flash to an environment that needed flash. Or they made a mistake of bringing too much gear when they really didn't need that much gear. But that one I can't really fault because I would rather you bring more and uh, have everything there rather than looking for it afterwards in the future. So I hope that puts it to rest. I really believe that there is no difference between a natural light photographer and that of a flash photographer. We are all just photographers, but we might specialize in something, but we can't say that we, since I specialize in this, I don't know how to do this. We have to be able to know how to use both types of light. I'll just give you a, a brief example. Like I love mixing ambient light and flash. So where do you put me? Am I a flash photographer or am I a natural light photographer? Because I use artificial light, or I'm sorry, I use natural light um, or what I call my ambient light to create my scene and I just use my flash to focus my light on the subject. So where does that, where do I fall in then? That's why I am just a photographer. I'm not a flash photographer. I'm not a natural light photographer. I am just a photographer. Another one is finding the balance between knowledge and art. Again, there are technical photographers and there are very artsy photographers. But the problem there is that some people have a natural tendency to believe that art supersedes technical and some people say that technical supersedes art. It should be a merriment of both. This topic came about by some people saying that um, they made a mistake of using the term for art's sake so loosely when they were just starting in order to disguise that they didn't know anything about tech the technical aspect of photography. And some technical photographers stating that how they wish they actually tried to express themselves more instead of just focusing about proper exposure and making sure that the rule of thirds is, is perfect, never really breaking the rules that they learned. So yeah, so again, it, it's a mixture. It's a, it's a, that's why with us, with photographers, it's always gonna be a constant journey. 
for us to be able to find that proper mix and find out who we are. Um, the, for me, the, great, the greatest art photographers are all technically based. So it, it's a, it should really just be both. So last is starting too late. This one actually resonated with me also when I was reading the comments to the post. Um, because I started relatively late in, in my life when it came to photography. And the reason why I regret starting so late was thinking about all the memories that I missed, the, all the memories that I failed to document, especially that of family. But when it came to work, I actually shift genres at the age of 40, which is very, very late when it comes to wedding photography, because most wedding photographers that I shoot with are in their mid 20s or early 30s, and they've been doing it for some time already. The excuse of, oh no, it's too late, I shouldn't do this anymore, that is what's gonna stop you from really achieving your dreams and your goals. So. Don't let age bother you. Just do whatever it is that you're loving and enjoy whatever it is that you're doing. So I just want to state it again that the topics that I discussed here, though it came generally from all the answers of the question that I posted in the Facebook groups, the words that I used were mine and I refused to read their personal comments for purposes of privacy. And if you guys want to share some of your mistakes to um, our fellow photographers who are just starting out on the craft, please do leave them in the comment section below. So if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that every time I upload a new video, you will be notified. And if you want to see some of the images that I've created, feel free to follow me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.